Hi, I'm Megan and welcome to my kitchen. In today's What's for Dinner video, I'll be sharing with you what meals we had this past week. Our dinners were easy to make, budget friendly, and delicious. So if you'd like to get some weeknight meal ideas for your family, just keep watching. For dinner this first night, we made turkey and brie paninis. This was my first time making them or having them, and they were delicious. My husband and I love these. I can't wait to make them again. Now, I can't take credit for this. Stephanie from Still Single Stephanie had commented on one of my videos and said that she loves making paninis with turkey and apple and cranberry mayonnaise. So it sounded delicious. I looked on Pinterest and I found a few different recipes and I decided to do two different versions of turkey and brie panini. So let me show you what I did. Again, these were delicious. I'm going to start by making a couple different condiments for my sandwiches. For one of the sandwiches, I'm going to do a cranberry mayonnaise. So in this small little bowl here, I'm adding in maybe about a tablespoon or two of mayonnaise. Then I added in a tablespoon of cranberry sauce. I'm just stirring that until it's well combined and then I'm gonna set that to the side. Now, for the second condiment, I'm just making a Dijon mayonnaise. So again, adding a couple tablespoons of mayonnaise to this bowl, adding in maybe a half tablespoon, tablespoon of Dijon mustard, stirring that until it's well combined, and then I'm going to set those to the side. Now I'm going to assemble my sandwiches. I'm using this Pepperidge Farm sourdough bread. I'm laying my bread out on my cutting board and then I'm going to butter one side of the bread and turn that over so that when I put it in the panini press, the buttered side is on the outside. Next, I'm going to add some of that cranberry mayonnaise and I was generous with that. And then I'm adding my turkey. This is leftover Thanksgiving turkey, but you could just use your favorite deli meat. Then I'm going to add some slices of the brie cheese and I did remove the rind and that's it for that first sandwich. Pretty simple, just the cranberry mayonnaise, turkey and brie cheese. For the second sandwich, I'm going to add some of that Dijon mayonnaise and spread that out on both sides. Then I'm adding some of the leftover Thanksgiving turkey. Next, I'm going to take a Granny Smith apple and slice it into very thin strips. I'm adding the brie cheese. Again, the rind has been removed. I'm going to add the slices of apple. And then some of the recipes that I saw on Pinterest added bacon and I thought that sounded delicious. So I just have some of this Hormel ready cooked bacon. I popped a couple slices in the microwave. I'm going to add the bacon and close the sandwich up and then I'm ready to cook them. I'm going to cook these on my Cuisinart griddler. I love this thing. I know I've mentioned it several times on my channel before. My parents got it for me a few years ago for Christmas and I love it. I use it all the time. So I'm going to add my sandwiches and then close the lid and give it a press. I cooked these for about two minutes and then gave them a flip and I rotated the sandwiches as well. Cooked them for another two or three minutes until they were golden brown. Now, if you don't have a panini press, no worries at all. You can just cook these you know, in a skillet over the stove. You could also cook these in the oven or the air fryer whatever you like. So like I said, once they were nice and toasted, I removed them from the press, cut them in half, and then that was it. Here are the plates. I just served it with some of the leftover um, sliced up green apples and some grapes that I had in the refrigerator that I needed to use up. And then I gave us each one half of the two different sandwiches. And like I said, these were delicious. They were so good. We honestly couldn't even pick our favorite. I will definitely make these again. And next time I make them, I think I'm just gonna combine everything into one sandwich. So I'll do the cranberry mayonnaise, the turkey, the brie cheese, the sliced apples, and the bacon and just combine them into one because they were both so delicious. I recommend you all give this a try. And I didn't use a specific recipe. I just kind of went off of different things that I saw on Pinterest. But I'll try to find a couple of the recipes that I did kind of take inspiration from and I'll link those in the description box below. For dinner the next night, I made fish stick tacos. I've shared this before. This is such an easy and quick dinner and that's what I needed this night. I had a half a box of fish sticks in my freezer that I wanted to use up. I got these from Aldi. I cooked these in the air fryer. I cooked them at 400 degrees for about six minutes, gave it a shake and cooked it for another maybe four or five minutes just until they're crispy to your liking. So once those fish sticks were done, I just warmed up some of these fajita sized tortillas. I added some diced up tomato, some guacamole, and then I used some of the Chipotle Ranch from Great Value, and that was it. This was our dinner this night. Super quick and easy and yummy. 
Dinner the next night was also courtesy of the freezer. I know I've mentioned this a couple times, but I am trying to work through my freezers to get things used up and rotated. I had a frozen pizza in there and I wanted to use it up, so I decided to make that for dinner tonight. I'm also going to make side salads. And I've mentioned homemade ranch before many, many times on my channel, but I don't think I've shown me making it. And I don't think I've shared me making it because it's, it's honestly, it's really easy. I just follow the instructions. But I decided to go ahead and share it tonight just to show you how easy it is um because homemade ranch there's nothing wrong with the bottle but homemade it's just so good it's so much better it's so easy it's just three ingredients you need mayonnaise and then milk i'm using this just regular milk i've also used almond milk in the past you can also use buttermilk that's super delicious and then i'm using the hidden valley dry ranch dressing mix i've used the aldi brand the walmart brand they're all delicious i've also in the past made my own dry ranch dressing mix you can do that as well but you just combine everything together and then you'll want to place it into the refrigerator and you do want to make this about maybe 30 minutes before you actually need it to kind of let it set up a little bit and it'll also thicken up. So I'm going to mix everything, pour it into this little mason jar, pop it into the refrigerator while the pizza is baking. I'm using the Motor City Pizza Company frozen pizza and I got this at Walmart. I've mentioned this before on my channel. I saw this on uh, Fallon's channel, Moss Family TV. I'll have it linked in the description box below. I did add pineapple to about half the pizza and I just baked it according to the package instructions. This is a really good frozen pizza. I recommend it. It really doesn't taste like a frozen pizza. It tastes like, you know, you went to a restaurant or you ordered pizza. So it's really good, but I just cooked it according to the package instructions. And then here are the plates. We have the sides salads and the pizza super quick and easy dinner and it was delicious for dinner the next night i made poke bowls my husband absolutely loves poke bowls he could probably eat these every day but i have to admit they are good now disclaimer i'm not claiming that these are authentic at all this is just the way that we like to make them and we like to eat them so let me show you what i do First for the rice. Now how I make the rice, it really just depends on what I feel like that day. Sometimes I will take sushi rice and you know cook it up and use that. Today to make it a little easier on myself, I'm using this microwavable jasmine rice. I just cooked it according to the package instructions. And then I'm also going to use a mixture of sugar, rice vinegar and a little bit of salt but i'll show you how i do that in just a minute so next i'm going to get started on a quick crab salad i decided to make this because i was digging around in my refrigerator and i found this little package of like the imitation crab meat and i needed to use it up so i decided to make the crab salad this is so so easy and this little package of the imitation crab was only a dollar so super budget friendly so all i did was take two forks and kind of pull it apart just like you're doing pulled pork I added that to this bowl and then I'm going to add in some mayonnaise. Uh, I had a little Miracle Whip on hand that I wanted to use up so I'm adding that. And then some sriracha to taste. I'm going to give that a stir and that's it. So easy. The rice is done. Again, I just cooked it in the microwave. So I'm going to add it to this bowl, fluff it a little bit with a fork. And then I'm going to add, I don't, I can't remember what they call this, but it's basically seasoning for the rice. All I did was take about a tablespoon of rice vinegar, put it in this little bowl. I added a little bit of sugar and some salt and I microwaved it for just a few seconds until the sugar dissolved. I'm going to drizzle that over the rice and fluff it and then set it to the side and allow it to cool. Gary loves ahi tuna on his poke bowls, but it can be expensive. So what I do is I buy it at Aldi. This package of ahi tuna steaks, as you can see here, it is sushi gray quality, which means you can eat it raw or rare. This package is $4 and something, which is a phenomenal deal. So I just removed the tuna steaks from the package and patted them dry just a little bit. And then I cut them into small little dices. You don't want to mince them, but you don't want to have kind of super huge chunks either. So I'm going to dice that and then set it to the side. Now I'm ready to assemble the bowls. So I'm gonna start out by making mine first. I like to lay down a bed of rice. Next, I'm going to add in some shrimp. This is already cooked shrimp. I got this on sale at the grocery store. These were huge, so I just cut them in half. Next, I'm adding some diced cucumber, then diced avocado. Next, I'm adding some of that diced ahi tuna. And then I like to add some fried onions on top. It's really yummy. It might sound a little weird, but it gives it a nice crunch. Next, I'm adding some salad mix. 
And then I don't like soy sauce on my sushi, so I'll explain that in a minute, but I love eel sauce. You can get this at um, like Asian markets. I buy it on Amazon. It's also called unagi or sushi sauce. And then I have some of this sriracha mayo. We make poke bowls all the time, so we buy this at Publix or Walmart, but you can also just mix mayonnaise and sriracha together. So I'm going to add that, and then I like to add some uh, sesame seeds on top, and that's it for my bowl. Let me show you how I make uh, my husband's. I'm going to lay down a bed of rice, then I'm adding some of that ahi tuna, then the cooked shrimp, and then that spicy crab salad that we made earlier. Next, I'm adding the chopped avocado and cucumber, then some of the salad mix, and then he likes seaweed salad on his poke bowls. Sometimes I make it, but today I just bought it at the sushi counter at Kroger. So I'm adding that, and next are the toppings. I'm sprinkling on some of those fried onions, and then he likes pickled ginger with his sushi and poke bowls. I just got this at Walmart, so I'm adding some of that. And then he likes the everything but the bagel uh, seasoning, so I'm going to sprinkle that over the bowl, add some of that eel sauce and the spicy mayonnaise, and then that's it. That's his bowl. And here are both of our bowls. This was so incredibly delicious, and it's super filling and nice and fresh. Now, if you don't like raw fish or if you're kind of intimidated by it, there are multiple different options for you. So you can use the cooked shrimp like I used. That imitation crab meat is cooked. You could also use just regular crab meat that's cooked. And you can cook your seafood. You don't have to use it raw. You can sear ahi tuna. You can cook salmon. You can use canned salmon. So you don't have to go with just raw fish. And if you don't like seafood at all, just think of this as a burrito bowl, but a Japanese version of it. So you could use tofu. You could use chicken, uh, you know, pork, whatever you like. Um, like I said, think of it more as a Japanese kind Kind of burrito bowl if you are not a seafood fan or you know sushi fan but like I said I recommend you all give these a try they're so yummy for dinner the next night I tried a new recipe from Tamara over at Southern Wife Everyday Life I'll have her channel linked in the description box below this was easy and it was delicious so I recommend you all give this a try it's a barbecue sweet chili chicken my oven is preheating to 375 degrees. I've lined my baking dish with some aluminum foil for easy cleanup. I'm using chicken thighs. You can use drumsticks, breasts, whatever chicken you prefer or what you can find on sale. I'm going to season both sides of the chicken with some salt, pepper, and garlic powder. And then Tamara's recipe didn't call for this next ingredient, but I had just a little bit of this homemade barbecue rub seasoning on hand and I wanted to use it up. I'll have the recipe that I used linked in the description box below. So I sprinkled that on as well. And then this is going to go into the oven and bake for about 20 to 25 minutes. While the chicken is cooking, I'm going to mix up the sauce. It's just two ingredients, super easy. I'm adding in some barbecue sauce. Use your favorite. I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's and then add in some sweet chili sauce. Again, I'm using Sweet Baby Ray's. That's it. I'm going to stir that until it's combined really well. Now, I didn't measure, um, which I don't measure I should, but I kind of eyeball most things. And I added a little too much sweet chili sauce. I gave it a taste and it was a little spicy for me. So I added in a tablespoon of grape jelly. You can also add just a little sugar if it's too hot for you. Uh, the grape jelly might sound weird, but it gave it a nice little sweetness. And if you have ever had like crock pot meatballs, a lot of times you combine barbecue sauce and grape jelly. So it was, it was good. It was yummy. Now, once the chicken has cooked, I removed it from the oven and I brushed both sides of the chicken with the barbecue sauce. And then I placed it back into the oven for another 10 or 15 minutes. You just want to make sure that you cook your chicken until it's at least 165 degrees internal temperature. To go along with the chicken, I'm making some baked potatoes. I have these microwavable potatoes that I got at Kroger. I wanna use them up, so I'm cooking them in the microwave according to the package instructions. I'm also going to do some broccoli and cheese. So I have this steamable bag of broccoli that I got from Aldi. I'm going to cook that according to the package instructions as well. And then I'm using some of this Velveeta cheese sauce. I like to place this in a small saucepan with a little bit of milk and some pepper and over low heat, just bring that up to temperature until it's warm. Now this pot right here has nothing to do with dinner, but I wanted to share it with you real quick. This is what I call potpourri. My dad used to do this all the time during Christmas when we were growing up, and I like to do it as well. It's so easy, but it makes your house smell amazing. It, it Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I highly recommend you give this a try. All I do is add some water to a pot, then I add in some orange peel, 
clove and cinnamon and that's it and you just simmer that now you do want to keep an eye on it obviously because as it simmers you know the water will evaporate so you'll need to add water to it but like i said it makes your whole house smell so good all right back to dinner so here's the finished chicken and then we have the cheese sauce the broccoli and with the leftover barbecue sauce once the chicken came out of the oven i did add just a final little bit of barbecue sauce here are the plates we have the chicken baked potato i added a little salt and butter and then we have the broccoli and cheese this was so easy and it was delicious and i actually after i took this picture i added my broccoli and cheese to my baked potato so good the next day we went to Cheddar's. Now, if you're not familiar with Cheddar's, it's um, a chain restaurant and they just sell like American type food. We were running errands and there was a Cheddar's right next to where we were and I love Cheddar's. So I asked if we could go there. I like going there because the prices are really affordable and the portions are huge and the food is really good. We've always had good meals there. So we started out with their chips and salsa and queso. I love their queso. It's delicious. And their salsa, they make it fresh in house every day. So it's so good. We always get extra salsa. Then they brought out croissants. These are just free. They, they just provide it to you. Um, but their croissants are delicious and they have the most yummy honey butter that they serve on it. And then for the entrees, my husband got their chicken tenders tossed in buffalo sauce and it came with fries and coleslaw. And then I got the New Orleans pasta. I've shared a copycat version of this New Orleans pasta on my channel. I'll have it linked in the description box below. It's so good. But like I said, their portions are so big. I didn't even eat probably half my pasta i took the rest home and ate it for lunch a day or so later and my husband um, took his coleslaw and uh, two of his chicken tenders home so that was our dinner so yummy for the last dinner in this week's video we have leftovers so i have been craving like loaded fries i was digging around in my freezer for some frozen french fries and i found just like a few little tater tots in a bag as you can see here there were not many like maybe 10 so i wanted to use those up i cooked them in the air fryer at 400 degrees for about eight or nine minutes until they were crispy i like my tater tots and fries crispy once they were crispy, I removed them, uh, added some shredded cheddar cheese, some bacon bits, put them back in the air fryer for just a minute or two until that cheese was melted. And then here's my plate. I warmed up a piece of the barbecue sweet chili chicken. I have those loaded tater tots. I added some chopped green onions, and then I have some of the leftover homemade ranch we made a few nights ago to dip my tater tots in, and that was my dinner. My husband ate his dinner a little bit later. He was still working and I was hungry. He ended up having some of the leftover Motor City Pizza Company pizza, and then he warmed up his chicken tenders from Cheddar's, and that's what he had for his dinner. And real quick before I close out the video, I mentioned when I made the turkey and brie paninis that that was a suggestion from one of my viewers, Stephanie from Still Single Stephanie, and we love that so much, and it got me thinking, I would really love to try some of your all's recipes. I get so many comments and suggestions down in my uh, comment section, and everything that we've tried, we have loved. So I, you know, although this is my channel, it's, it's our channel, really. Um, I am so grateful for all of you for watching, for commenting, for giving comments and suggestions. So if you have a recipe that you would like for us to try, please email it to me. My email address is in the description box below. It's meganskitchen at gmail.com. But remember, my first name is spelled kind of funky. <laughs> it's M-A-E-G-E-N, the letter S, kitchen at gmail.com and I will start making those I, I don't plan on doing like dedicated like subscriber recipes or like subby suppers and things like that but I definitely want to you know make more of the things that you all suggest and your all's recipes so if you have anything send it to me in an email please I would love to try it thank you so much for watching I hope that you liked this video if you did hit the thumbs up button below subscribe to my channel if you're not already and I hope you have a great rest of the day thanks so much bye-bye